Hey do-it-yourselfers, tell me that you don't have an outlet in your house that looks a bit like this with adapters plugged in for your USB devices. Let's see what we can do to clean this up. Welcome back to the channel do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician here. Now today we're going to just show you a nice way to clean up your outlets that you may have a whole bunch of USB adapter plugs plugged into and you can use the outlet and actually use your USBs as well. So we're going to change that receptacle that we showed in the opening to this Leviton Decora. It's an 18 watt USB A and C receptacle. So there you go, you can charge a, a USB A or a C or both at the same time as well as have your outlets free to use. So let's get started with this. We'll go step by step on replacing a regular Decora outlet receptacle to one of these. So just a couple housekeeping items here before we get started. Make sure that you're going to put this on a circuit that is of the same rating, the same amperage rating. So this particular receptacle is rated for 15 amps. So we're putting that on a 15 amp circuit with 14 gauge wire and we have a 15 amp breaker feeding it. You also want to make sure that you don't put this somewhere where it can't be located, such as a GFCI receptacle near a sink or in your garage or your basement or outdoors. You don't want to put it there unless, of course, that circuit is already protected by ground fault circuit interrupter breaker or a GFCI, AFCI combination breaker. But basically, common sense, put the receptacle where it's going to be most useful for you and where it's going to be able to get connected. Another consideration is that this is a fairly deep body here. So you make, want to make sure you got room in that box. You don't want to put it into a, an outlet box that already has six or seven wires, conductors in it. It just, it's not going to fit. So hopefully that the box you pick will only have a maximum of say one cable in, one cable out. So four wires. You should be able to fit this in a standard box, but check that. Lots of older homes are going to have a lot of shallower metal boxes that one of these just isn't going to fit. So those are some things to consider. Also make sure it's got your approvals, your appropriate approvals and anything coming from Leviton that's going to be sold in your box stores, your do-it-yourself outlets, they are going to have that approval. So you don't have to worry about that too much, but something to consider. So let's move over to the demo board where we're going to do this installation and we'll go step by step. And of course, as always, safety first. Shut off that breaker before you start your job. And you know, it never hurts to say this before because I always say it at the end of my videos and some of you have already left me by the time I say it. So if you would please, if at the end of the video, if you like it, give it that like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click that notifications bell and let's get to the job. All right, so before we get started, make sure you got all the tools you're gonna need. Likely gonna need a flat blade screwdriver and I'm gonna need a number six Robertson. In the US, you're probably gonna use Phillips for this. And I've got my red Robertson, a number two. Got a knife, and of course I've got my circuit tester, so let us first check and make sure we got the power off. So let's get rid of all this junk. Not really junk, they're useful, but hey, we're, we're making this better. Plug in my circuit tester. I've got two lights showing it's all wired correctly. Shut off the breaker. We're just working on my demo board here as usual so the panel's nice and handy. We're ready to get started. So first step, take off the cover plate. And these steps are standard to pretty much any outlet replacement that you're gonna find throughout the house. You gotta take the cover plate off first. Try not to lose your captive screws. These little guys are hard to find if you drop them. Take your number one Robertson and or a Phillips or even a standard blade. Remove your old device. Giving you a nice tight close up here so the autofocus is kind of going crazy. But that's just so you can see nice and close as to what I'm doing. And that was one of the, when I asked for some feedback, that was one of the items for feedback that I got is get my 
close-ups a little tighter so people can see what I'm doing. So that's what I'm trying to do for you here. Don't forget to make any comments and ask any questions you might have as well. Do that in the comment, comment box. With, as soon as I see a, a comment made on my channel, I get a notification. So I usually, if I'm anywhere near the computer I open, or my phone, which I'm always around my phone, I usually open it up right away. And if it's a nice comment, I say thanks for the comment. And if it isn't, I just delete it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I even respond to the bad ones, but I do have a 98%, I think, like versus dislike on my channel. So that makes me feel good. I must be doing something right, I guess. Let me know in the comments if you, if you disagree. Okay, so on this box, we've got lots of cable. Only one cable coming in. I see that's a little bit long and the clamps are, so we'll pull that up. But one cable in, nothing out, so this should be easy. The device should easily fit inside here. Okay, some things we gotta do to prepare to install this device. I did notice that the sheathing extended quite a bit down below the cable clamp here, so I pulled that back up so it's only about a half inch sticking out from under the strap. Check my ground, make sure it's connected to the grounding screw in the back of the box. Plastic box, you might wonder why there's a ground screw in it or a terminal, but this comes all the way out the strap here and it attaches to the old receptacle. So that receptacle then has a ground wire connected to it, but you can also see that these screws, when they're tightened down into the mounting strap here, that also acts as a ground to ground the device body, which will be common to the screw, the metal hardware, and now this plate inside the plastic box. So I see though that the new device is what we call backwired. So we are going to have to cut these, straighten them out. If they straighten out nice, we'll be okay because we don't need a, a hook on these anymore. You can use them, but I prefer when it's a backwired device to just bring them in, uh, strip about three quarters of an inch or a half an inch according to the strip gauge on the back. And then you just shove them straight in under the pressure plate and tighten the screws. So we're going to do it that way. Ground wire still needs a hook on it for the ground terminal. So I'm going to cut these wires. I think I've got plenty of length. So instead of trying to nicely straighten out my hook, I'm just going to restrip them. As I said, the ground's okay. On the back of this, there is a strip gauge. If you're going to side wire it with the old hooks, they say to strip it that long. If you're going to back wire it, strip it this long. So I always kind of know the distance. It's basically from here. So you've got insulation out to the end of the Bakelite here, and then the wire goes in behind the pressure plate. So we'll uh, see how we do with a, a guess and check it with that strip gauge. I think a little more according to my eyes. All right, let's see how I did with the gauge, just for fun. Exactamente. That is within a micron of the gauge. So, first things first, I always connect the ground wire first. And if you haven't watched other my other videos, when I'm doing any wiring, I like to work when disconnecting a device. I always like to go from Disconnect the hot first, the neutral second, the ground last. And when reconnecting a device, I always like to connect ground first. Tighten that down nice and tight, clockwise direction as usual. As always, flip it to the neutral side. And we have neutral and hot both on the same side of this receptacle. So that's not usually the way it is with the regular receptacle and there you see my wire is in behind the pressure plate not in front of it if you were going to side wire this device you would put that hook of your wire would be on the outside of the pressure plate and under the screw but when you back wire it's in behind so double check says white neutral pull on it not going anywhere it's in there tight now the hot, so working again 
on a new device, ground first, neutral second, and your hot wire last. Tug test. Uh, see, you've got a little bit of the black wire, a little too far out from under the pressure plate, so I'm going to back that off a little bit. That just ensures that you're getting a nice flat connection behind the pressure plate and against the contact point. So there you go. We're going to mount this the way I like to do them. Big controversy, but most people mount them happy face. Ground prong down, especially in a residential location. All right, so you line it up, make sure you got nothing pinched back in there. There's going to be lots of room for this device to go in without pinching any wires. As I mentioned before, if you had a, a already a box fill in here with the uh, maximum amount of cables, you would have a lot of trouble getting this in there without making sure you had a deep enough device box. Get my hand out of the way, but you get the idea. We're just turning in the device screws. Again, autofocus going a little crazy. If I'm doing a bunch of these, I use my cordless drill or cordless driver. Okay, here of course, demo wall. I don't have drywall all tidying around this box. Normally you would have drywall all flush around it. Okay, so we're gonna put the cover plate on. Some of these steps are just kind of obvious, but we'll go through them regardless. Line up your box screws to be vertical. It's just an aesthetic thing, not a code thing. I like to see them all lined up vertical. Some say horizontal, and some just don't care, and you'll see them all different directions. All right, plug in my plug tester. Go to the panel. Turn it on. I got two yellow lights, so telling me it's wired correctly. It's hard to see that with the studio lighting here, but trust me, it's on. Now we can plug in a couple of devices and just make sure they charge and we are done. Okay, so there you have it. The complete installation of one of these USB outlets, combination outlets, I guess you could call it. Thanks for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and I'm going to say it again. Please like, subscribe, click the notifications button, and I'll see you in the next one.